Hey everybody, Nate Payo here. You probably heard you should be networking on LinkedIn if you want to meet new clients. We have no idea where to begin. What I've done is I've created a five-step guide to help make your profile stand out and helping you get started connecting. When you start building your network, you're going to really start attracting more leads. So it's easy. Head on over to my website, natepayo.com, sign up and get my five steps of standing on LinkedIn. I'll show you how to start building your network. From author Donnie Bovean comes the book, How to Be a Success Champion, available on Amazon. After years of living other people's dreams, author Donnie Bovean decided to jump out on his own and start a business thinking it would be easy. Instead, he had a rude awakening and quickly understood that he had spent 20 years being an employee and had no idea how to be a business owner. His business was tanking and he was on the brink of losing everything when he decided to fight for business freedom. In this must-read and life-changing book, author Donnie Donnie Bovine shares with readers his story intermingled with lessons learned from his mistakes and his failures. In How to Be a Success Champion, you will find advice the author received from mentors and how he went from zero to a six-figure business. The author walks you through the steps of how to get out of your own way, how to play the game of business and win, find your strengths, how to network effectively, how to build a personal brand, how to create champions for your business, how to get great at sales, how to take complete ownership of you and your business how to be a success champion from author donnie bovine available on amazon in both kindle and paperback editions order your copy right now it makes a great book for corporate events too how to be a success champion from author donnie bovine available on amazon Want to go far in business and in life? You can't do it alone. The secret is expanding your network of personal relationships, building friendships, connecting on an intimate level, away from the office, over a coffee or cocktail. Welcome to All In with the real Nate Payo. The show that asks what happens when you go all in and leverage the power of your network of personal relationships. Hello, hello, and welcome to the All In Podcast with Nate Payo. Of course, I am your host, Nate Payo. I'm joined today with my guest, Vasavi Kumar. Vasavi is an international public speaker, licensed therapist, business strategist with over a decade of experience teaching her clients how to simplify their business and the self-love process. Vasavi holds dual master's degrees in special education from Hofstra University and social work from Columbia University. She's the host of the Being Human with Vasavi podcast and former co-host of the Studio 512, a lifestyle and entertainment morning show in Austin, Texas. She's been featured in the Wall Street Journal, Fox, VH1, and as a regular on NBC's Kansas City Live as the Keeping It Real Guru. She believes that when you cultivate a solid relationship with yourself, you can be, do, and have anything you want. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good, Nate. Thank you so much for reading my bio so beautifully. I love it. (laughs) I'm getting... (laughs) I'm it's getting so better. You're, yeah, no, you're doing great. I'm just like listening as you're reading all my accolades. I'm like, oh shoot, did I do all that? You know, it's just you, it's just funny to hear it. <laughs> you got a you got a definitely a lot of a lot of uh, cool stuff going on in your resume and and exciting stuff. Like, what's keeping it real, Guru? About what was what was that? So that was my first time ever on television. I was 29 years old. I'm 38 now. So I was 29. I was newly married, moved to Kansas City with my husband. He's not my ex-husband, but we moved to Kansas City. And uh, I had had a radio show on, um, on AM radio in Kansas City. And I had a show called Deep Talk. And I interviewed a bunch of New York Times bestselling authors in the self-help industry, like Don Miguel Ruiz, John Gray, who wrote Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. And I love doing radio. And then I was like, you know, I, I kind of want to get in front of the camera. You know, I'm a daddy's girl. My dad always put me in front of the camera when I was a kid. And I was like, I was, I'm not camera shy at all. So I pitched myself to the producers of a new morning show that was just coming up in Kansas City called Kansas City Live. And they're like, well, we want to call you something. And, and I, you know, like we want to phrase you as something. We want you to have a title. And I was talking to one, the host and he was like, you know, he's like, you really just keep it real. And I was like, yeah, I mean, life's too short to not keep it real. So they just call me the keeping it real 
guru. That's pretty cool. What's yeah. funny though is because like when you're thinking of like a name to call yourself, sometimes you're like, well, are people going to believe this about me? Are they going to like it? But like when people only like, that's how they're introduced to you. It's like, oh, of course you're the keeping a real guru. Like yeah. you can keep it real. And, I, and maybe you like lean into that personality or, or you're pretty strong with it to begin with. So that's awesome. That's an awesome way to get started. And, and a lot of people probably say, hey, getting up on camera, that's, that's huge. That's scary stuff. Like, but you've been used to doing it. Um, so I'd like to ask you my first question which is what are your thoughts on luck? Are people lucky? Okay. This is a, I, 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 I've thought about this before in my life and I have to say this. Um, I do believe that everything that I have in my life right now is a combination of two things. It is the grace of God and it's also my hard work. Mm -hmm. I cannot just sit here and say, and I, this is not a religious thing. This is really my own relationship to a, to a power bigger than myself. Your audience should know that I'm a recovered addict and alcoholic over a year and three months now. So I owe my sobriety and my recovery to the grace of God, a God of my understanding. So while I believe in, in a higher power, I also know that, you know, you, you, you can't get the things that you want in life by just praying under a tree, right? You got to put in the effort too. So I'm very, very deeply connected to um, a power greater than myself. And I also bust my ass on it every, every single day basis to get what I want. So do I believe in luck? Uh, no, not really. I got to be honest. I, I, I just don't. I think it's grace. And I, and I think that, you know, we are all dealt a certain deck, a certain hand of cards when we're born. Some of us have limited resources. Some of us has limited access. Some of us have struggles and obstacles that are way more like just, just, just huge compared to other people. And while we shouldn't be comparing I think it's just, you know, there, there are definitely people who are walking this earth who have been handed a pretty um, tough lot in life. And I also believe that when you develop a strong mindset and you develop a, I'm going to figure this out mentality, and you tap into something greater than yourself, you can be, do, and have anything that you want. So I do not yeah. believe in, I, I don't really believe in <laughs> luck, like, oh, she's so lucky. I think that we need to constantly be putting ourselves in situations where we are open to the wealth of abundance that the universe has to offer in the shape of people, places, and things. But I do not think it's like, oh, she's so lucky because like, it, think good things just happen to her. No, I think a lot of the luck that we see happen to people who put themselves out there are, are vibrating on a higher, higher emotional level and then an energetic level and um, really are open to receiving mm -hmm. good things that, that the universe has to offer us without well, sounding think, too woo-woo, by the way. Not well, it, it does it because, you know, you're, you're talking about like th there's things put into your life, maybe through the grace of God or the universe puts those into your life. And, and things come into everybody's lives or they have the opportunity to have things come into their lives if they put themselves in positions where those are more likely to have them. But you have to be a bit observant. You have to train yourself to be able to see them. And those things uh, lead to other fruits. So if you are you know, looking for something like, hey, I want to start a business and you start hanging out where people are in that area, you're going to have more luck than, say, hanging out at your house. But you yes. got to start being aware of what's going on. Now, you talked a, a bit about um, recovering addiction and, and alcoholism. And, and I think that's another thing, too, is like you have to identify one that you want to change yourself. And yeah. then you have to think about like, hey, where could I go to to surround myself with people that are going to help me, uh, you know, receive more gifts that are going to take me down this path towards sobriety. So I think that's an important to topic because. I think so many people, um, myself included, have questioned their relationship with drugs and alcohol. And a lot of times people don't realize they don't have that rock bottom moment, I guess you'd call it, that, that they don't necessarily always identify with being an alcoholic compared to maybe other people that they recognize, but they say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely in a spot where I could be better off if I didn't have it in my life. So do you work with a lot of clients that are in that same boat or is that just kind of like your personal journey? Yeah, that, that's such a great question. And what I want to just say one thing, like you don't have to have a problem with alcohol for it to not be a problem in your life, right? Like you may think mm -hmm. you don't have a problem with alcohol. I'm with a high functioning alcoholic and cocaine addict for four years straight. I was running a one-on-one -on -one coaching business 
making $10,000 consistently every month. And my so-called little party habit, which started off once a week on a Friday, right, became a six day a week thing that I eventually had to go get professional help for. And I went to rehab not once, but twice because I'm a thorough learner and I don't learn my lessons the first time around. <laughs> so now I'm, I'm, I'm sober. I would not have it any other way. Do I work with people who want to get sober? I don't. And I have thought about this. I really have thought about this. And that's why I love this question because it's something that I think about like, man, should I be working with people who want to get sober, who, who want to give up alcohol, who want to really start looking at their addictions? I don't. I don't. And um, it's really more part of my personal journey. But I can tell you this, having gone through my own recovery process and being a recovered addict and alcoholic and learning to be rigorously honest with myself and truthful with myself um, and other people as a result, it's equipped me to be a better coach and a better therapist to other people. So no, like if you go to my website at VasiliKumar.com, I don't say anything about like, I work with people who want to get sober. Like I, I just don't, it's, it's part of my personal journey. Uh, but uh, you know, ironically enough, a lot of the women that I work with, not a lot, but a, you know, they, they all have their addiction in their own way. We all are addicted to something, right? It doesn't have to be something as illegal as a, as cocaine or like, or, you know, like life threatening, like, like an alcohol or, or, or any sort of drug, but we have addictions to other things, right? Relationships, men, validation, approval, negative mm -hmm. thinking, food. So, um, addiction really is just a, uh, lack of connection to ourselves. And that's really the game that I'm in, which is helping but, you reconnect with yourself. That's what I was just going to go to is, you know, on your website, you talk a lot about helping people discover self-love, discover validation. And, you know, you know, we might trade one habit for another habit. We might trade alcohol addiction for chasing attention in other aspects or are constantly making bad decisions or combining those together to make bad decisions. Um, but when we do kind of reach in and discover our, true worth to ourselves you know we have we a lot of us have these self-doubts that sneak up and they we talk a little bit uh, before the show how like you know sometimes we overcome these self-doubts and they show back up and we get a little bit frustrated like hey i thought i thought this beast has been conquered and here it is again you know what are the kind of the things you you see with people um accepting themselves for who they are and getting past it and and becoming more confident in their own skin I think definitely the expectations that family, our romantic partners, society, the media has placed on us, social media does not help, um, the, who we think we should be based upon what other people have told us that we need to be is definitely the number one thing that gets in the way of people really truly being self-expressed. I can tell you right now as a first generation um, Indian immigrant woman, my parents are from India, they came to the US in 1974, I was born and raised in New York. I grew up in a very traditional Indian household. I grew up in a household where it's like, okay, uh, so my, my mom's a retired cardiologist. My dad's a retired CPA. Both of them are you know, professionals, had their own practices. So we were expected to go to Ivy League colleges. My sister became a doctor. I kind of took a different path with like therapy and social work and coaching and running my own business. And I even became a plant-based chef. I did all sorts of stuff. I, I'm, I'm kind of the black sheep of the family. You know, I, I'm more of the free-spirited one, but we were expected to make sure that you know, we, we got Ivy League education. In fact, when I, when I got my master's in social work, I got accepted both into NYU and Columbia. And my parents said, we're going to Columbia because it's an Ivy League college. Mm -hmm. and, and they're like, we're gonna pay for it. You're gonna go to the Ivy League college because status was very, is very important in the Indian culture. Now, I don't prescribe to any of that. I don't subscribe to any of that, excuse me. But you know, um, I, I do feel like as women, especially, and I know men have their own set of expectations that are placed on them. You know, for women, it's like, got to get married, got to have kids, got to be like this and got to be like this. And you got to be picked by a man. You got to be chosen by a man. You have to settle down. And these are the things that we, we, that are placed upon us. For men, it's like, you have to be the provider. You have to be the rescuer of women. You have to be manly. You can't be too emotional, right? Like from a very young age, we are literally taught how to be and how not to be in order to gain love and approval. And so my job really is to come in and all, by the way, all of that conditioning is now affecting you in your present, present life. And so my job is to come in and because I've done this work on myself personally, I, I give way more weight to the personal work that I've done on myself, even more than my professional training. My professional <laughs> training is great. Makes me look great on paper for anyone who needs the accolades. I have all of them, but what really makes me qualified is that I've had to do this stuff on my own. You know, I, I, I'm not just sitting here preaching it. And so my job is to come in 
And you could tell me any situation in your life going on. And I have trained myself with myself and with my clients to really look for what are the beliefs, right? Because everything starts with the belief. We cannot mm -hmm. just go straight to changing our behavior, right? We got to look at what are the beliefs? What are the thoughts? What are the feelings? Which, which inevitably produces the action, which ultimately produces the results, right? So my job is really going in and questioning those beliefs because from a very young age, call this the grace of God, call this just, a, I'm just curious. I was born curious. I just was always very curious about why do people think the way they do? Why do I think this way? Um, so I think it's really going from more of just being, just doing what we've been told to really having the courage to be like, where did I learn this from? Who taught me this? Like, Nate, I'm single now, right? I'm single mm -hmm. after 15 years of being in a relationship. I've been in three major relationships in the past 15 years. So since I was 22, so I'm uh, sorry, 17 years, um, 16 years. I'm sorry, I can't do my math. I don't know how old <laughs> I am. But for the first time, I'm single, right? And I mm -hmm. already have people in my community, in the Indian community, uh, which I'm, I'm pretty detached from, but like my family, like, are you going to get married again? Or, you know, you're turning 38, you want to have kids? I was like, nope and nope. Like, I don't want that, you know? So it's just, that takes a lot of confidence to do that. It takes a lot of confidence to stand alone. And I'm not telling everyone listening to go be single and break up with your partner, but whatever it is, you got to have your own identity. You got to have your own voice because even if you're in a relationship, you can lose yourself in that relationship. So all I'm saying is, regardless of if you're in a marriage or, or romantic partnership or domestic partnership, or you're alone or whatever, you got to know who you are because if you don't know who you are, somebody else is going to tell you who you mm -hmm. are, how you should be, how you should think. And I know that from firsthand experience, being in a yeah. very toxic codependent relationship with a narcissist. Yeah. Well, you talk about, you know, you you did a lot of self-work, which gives you a lot of experience. And one of the things that's like stuck in my head, maybe it's something somebody told me, these beliefs, but I had this teacher in junior high, he told me like, hey, if, if I, if I, tell you how to do something, you'll probably learn about 25% of it. But if I show you how to do it, you'll learn 50. If you do it yourself, you'll learn 75. But when you go help somebody else and show them what you've learned, that's when you truly master, you get the 100%. So when you, you've you gone through these things, you see these things, you're able to probably make quicker um, identifying like, hey, this is where your problem stems from. Like you think it's here, but it's really down here because I've been there. I've been in those shoes, maybe not the exact same problem, but very similar. And, and it boils down to changing changing that perspective. And then, you, you know, when you talk about like these beliefs we've held for a long time, like here's something that I've kind of like, struggled with all my life. I, I grew up in, in a Christian home and we went to a church and it was, it was a bit of like a born again, like, um, you know, hallelujahs, praise Jesus type stuff. And I remember I didn't really feel like I fit in. I felt rebellious and I felt like I wanted to distance myself from that. And there's a lot of things like I couldn't reconcile with like the stuff they taught you and then the stuff like, you know, to be more, maybe a little bit more scientific based, but no matter what, like in my, my, in my life, I've always held this, this notion that I'm, I probably believe Christianity. And if somebody said, could you become a Buddha or could you become a, a Hindu or could you become Jewish? You're like, oh, well, maybe the teachings and everything's pretty much at its core, very similar, but it's just like, I, I don't know how I could, you know, leave that belief behind and change, mm -hmm. even though I'm not really holding on and identifying as a belief of a Christian, I still don't, I hold on to it enough that I can't go identify with something else that, that maybe would resonate with me. So yeah. it's weird that you say that. Yeah. I mean, we hold on to things that give us a sense of identity. You don't have, I mean, it, it, we want a sense of belonging as human beings, right? Like we want to feel like we're part of something, even though maybe I don't know this, you're not, you know, you you know, maybe you're not heavily part of the church or something. It's familiar and it's comfortable. Now, if it's not holding you back, then that's fine. Right. But I also think there's an opportunity to, and I'm Hindu. Um, and what, what I want to say is like, if you're curious, just give, I mean, what I would do is if you were curious, I'm not trying to convert anyone. I don't believe yeah. in that, but I do think if you're curious and if you haven't already, you know, read a book on the Buddhist principles, read, you know, read a book on, on Hindu principles. And I don't think we need to like necessarily, I mean, sometimes it helps to change our entire paradigm right? If it's not working, but it's also about just getting curious. So for people listening who feel like, you know, who have never really questioned their beliefs and who've been more of like a straight, straight, narrow, like this is what I've been told. This is the way it's always been. It's really stopping you. It's mm -hmm. really holding you back. And it, it, not necessarily with religion. I'm not, but like, you know, suppose you're, you're working in a job and you wanted to start your side hustle. You want to start a business and your mind, your beliefs, what you have is no, I had to stick to one path and that's it. 
If you're mm-hmm. telling yourself that you are literally closing you off from other cool things that you could be doing and this other creative side of you, I'll give you a perfect example. My older sister, she's like the prodigal, you know, the, she's a prodigal good daughter, the older daughter. She, uh, she's a doctor, very Indian of her. And uh, she's an oncologist, palliative care. She works at UPenn. She's now the director of palliative oncology. And she's a brilliant writer. She's a brilliant mm-hmm. photographer. She is a, a very prolific speaker. She's just, she's just great when she speaks, right? Like you think, I mean, I, I think I'm a good speaker, but she's, she's just wonderful. And we've talked about, and she was just recently on a podcast, okay? She was on a pretty well-known NPR podcast. And I said to her, you know, like if you spoke enough, you could maybe even get a book deal and talk about embracing death and dying because that's, what, that's the field that she's in. Mm-hmm. And I said, and then you could cut back on your hours. You can get paid a nice little fancy advance to write a book and you could just, you could just tour and you could travel talking and, 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 you know, being a best-selling author. Like I, I see the vision for people, you know yeah. what I mean? She's like, I can't do that. I go, why? She's like, she goes, you know, she goes, I just, I don't see the need to do all that. She goes, I'm happy doing my clinic patients, my, you know, my clinic and my this, but she loves speaking. That's the thing. Like mm-hmm. I can tell when someone's just literally cutting themselves at the knee or they're just maybe just afraid and they don't know how, but she's of the mindset. Like I picked this path. This is it. I'm sticking to this path. And that's that. Mm -hmm. And I feel sorry because if you only allowed yourself to dream a little bit and visualize what else is out there and imagine you would see that you have a wealth of opportunity and you truly are limitless, limitless in your ability to be, do, and have anything that you want, but you got to give yourself a chance to do that, right? Yes. No I, and I totally agree with that. Like when I was referring to, to, to the religion, I was more like referring to it as this, this, this idea that gets planted in our, our seed at a young age. And I grew up in the Midwest too, and there's a lot of people that never leave their small towns. And they're just kind of, this is what we know, this is all it'll ever be. And that's fine because they're, they're content with it. But what I found is the more you expose yourself to different people, different cultures, different ideas, different ways of doing stuff, just, you know, a whole variety of stuff, your, your mindset changes of what is possible. And so you start, you start changing your beliefs and you realize like, hey, maybe it, this isn't um, have to be this way. Maybe if I choose that I want to pursue something I'm passionate about and you're hanging out with people that are doing it in this field, like your sister, like if she was hanging out with people that do public speaking for a full time living, you know, you start, they start rubbing off on you a little bit and you start seeing what's capable and what's possible. So I do agree that part of discovering who yourself is, is just, you know, right down to the core go, Hey, what are these beliefs that are maybe holding me back from being the best version of myself, discovering my gifts and then making the best of what they are, you know? So it's, when you use the word content, and I always, uh, I, I, I get little goosebumps when I hear that because do you know how many times, Nate, I've heard people say they're content, but they're really just complacent, right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of times people say they're content and that's just code for, I'm too afraid to try anything else. I'm just going to settle with where I'm at because anything outside of my so-called content life just feels very scary to me. So I'm like, I say to people, like, you say you're content, but are you really just complacent, you know? And so let's not get trapped into the also right? When I, I've, I've dated men like this and I've worked with clients like this um, that are like, I'm, I should be grateful for what I have. Yes, we should all be grateful, but also do not get trapped in the, I should be grateful. Therefore, I should not want more. I mm-hmm. should not want to be more. I should not want to have more. I should be grateful. You can be grateful for what you have right now and you can also want more for yourself. Yeah. And, and I think you can discover like, wanting more doesn't necessarily mean consuming more. It could be living up to your potential. It could be sharing your gifts with the world and letting, you know, be open to, to new ideas of of pursuing those. So, you know, if you're working with, with people um, and they're looking to do self-improvement, I'm sure that this idea of all in probably resonates with people is if like, Hey, you want to make a change, you know, what does it mean to be all in to you and the clients you're working with uh, when, they, when they're about to like, hey, I want to you know, figure out how to love myself a little bit better? It's an investment. And I'm not just saying financially, right? That's not even, that's not even what I'm saying is the, is the financial aspect. I'm saying mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Your soul is, is, is slowly 
losing its its brightness and we need to get it back right you are ready to make that change you are ready to do whatever it takes you are like okay i resonate with you vasavi i resonate with your story in some shape or form um i am ready to dismantle those beliefs i'm ready to clean up and tighten up those power leakages right those leakages in our life that we slowly ooze power whatever it is in our relationships in our finances in our health and wellness and it's it's someone who is willing to do whatever it takes all, being all in I'm going to add a little bit to this is being all inwards, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of seeking validation from people, places, and things on the outside, hoping that, oh, if I just look like this, I'll feel, I'll feel better. Or if, if I just start, you know, if I make this much money, I'll feel better. If I have these many followers, I'm going to get, I'm going to feel better. If I increase my bottom line by this, I'm going to feel better about myself. None of that matters. At the end of the day, none of that matters. And I can say that from per- firsthand as someone who was making 10 grand a month and yet I had a cl- closet cocaine addiction. What was, what was up there? What mm-hmm. was going on? You and I had a BMW, really nice apartment, fancy apartment, right? Making all this money, looking really good. Body was looking really great, but yet I still had this cocaine addiction. And so what I want everyone to hear is you don't have, like, what's your version of that, right? So just what's your, it doesn't have to be as extreme as cocaine, but like, are you really empty on the inside? Do you feel mm-hmm. like something is missing? Do you still seek validation and approval and love from the people, places, and things around you? Because if so, it's really time to start generating that happiness from within, to start validating yourself and to learn to love your own solitude. Because oftentimes what happens, Nate, when we don't learn how to love and not just love ourselves, like like ourselves, can you spend a whole few days just by yourself and be okay and enjoy it? When If you cannot learn to love your own solitude, you are always going to feel like you're empty and you're always going to be chasing the next, you know, bright and shiny squirrel, bright and shiny object to fill you up. And that is, and you're just going to be chasing your tail your whole life. So, you know, the work that I'm in with people is obviously I'm a business strategist. So I'm very good at helping people monetize their ideas, social media marketing, on camera presence, copywriting. I've done all of it for 10 years. But what I'm a master at is really helping people develop that love for themselves, that care, tightening up those routines, those habits, and really having a stronger mindset so you can be unshakable and be, do, and have anything that you want. Mm -hmm. Well, I think too, like you you start with the inside, you make that strong uh, foundation. That's going to open your, your, yourself up to being more successful at those other things you're talking about. You're, you're going to, you're going to serve your relationships better. You're going to be a better boss, business owner, whatever entrepreneur that you can be, you're going to make better friendships, deeper quality friendships. And you're going to say, Hey, look, if it's like that air mask thing, they always say, like, if you put the mask over yourself first, then you work with the other people. And I think that, that, you know, lesson can be applied to, to self-love and, for me, it's something that I probably have struggled with a lot. You know, if you said, hey, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, hey, would you go out to, you know, on a vacation by yourself? N- maybe. Would I go out to like dinners and out and about and go like on uh, the touristy stuff by myself? I'm like, probably not. Like, I, I would probably feel weird <laughs> by myself. And so, like, that that's a that's a big step and to say like hey, could i be comfortable enough to to go somewhere where i don't know anybody that i'm going to have to make conversations on my own and put myself out there and be vulnerable and like ooh that's that's a scary scary thought so that's a, that's a good and, way to look at it and i'm not i what i'm not saying to everybody is i just want you to dump who you're with and be alone but what i'm saying is Listen, we're, we're all in interaction with someone or something, right? If you're running a business, you're talking to people. Or you know, if you're in a relationship, you have kids, you have people around you. But just as much as you output to other people and you're putting out your energy, time, effort, I need you to do that with yourself. Mm-hmm. If, it, as much, if not more. Because what happens is, and especially with women, especially with, with women, I'll tell you this, is that they're constantly giving, giving, giving to everyone else. And then they come to me to work with me and they're like, I'm overwhelmed. I'm anxious. I'm polishing off a bottle of wine a night. I'm like, there is no need to be polishing off a bottle of wine a night. People who love themselves, people who feel comfortable in their skin, people who feel in control of their life and can manage and self-regulate their emotions do not need to drink a bottle of wine a night. I'll tell you right now, I've had a lot of stuff happen to me in the past year. I have not picked up a drink, not picked up a drug. And I'm just saying, those are the little habits that I'm talking about whatever it is, binge eating, binge drinking, binge, binge relationshiping, right? Like all of that is like all external. And so 
I, the person who comes to work with me is, is ready to put to have the mirror held up in front of their face. And they mm-hmm. trust me to do that because they know I've done it myself and I'm not judging them. Uh, I took a full sabbatical working with clients for a whole year. When I was in my recovery, I did not, st- I did not work with anybody. I was working on the back end of my business trying to figure out like, okay, core message. What is it again? What am I, you know, what, what am I offering? But I didn't work with any clients at all mm-hmm. because I, I needed the time for myself. Yeah. So let, let's talk, you kind of briefly touched on the, the clients that you work with. So, you know, who are these ideal clients? And by ideal clients is not like, who it, it, to me, it's like somebody that when they work with you and you work with them, you just both feel lifted up that you're just on fire and they're really awesome to work with. But maybe also like where, what's kind of their background? Why, why do they identify working with you uh, so positively and get the most out of it versus... I- I'm thinking about two clients that I have in mind and why we gel so well. They are, they are high achievers. They're overachieving. They pay very um, good attention to detail and they are self-aware. Um, and I got, I got to say the number one thing about them, they're extremely bright women. They both run their own businesses. One of them is an interior designer. One of them here has a local cookie company and her cookies are like gourmet and I've had them and I'm like, please do not give me your cookies, like at all. Like I will eat the whole, like 800 calories a cookie, but anyway, it's so worth it. But, um, and I have clients from all over. I live in Austin, Texas, but these two happen to be in Austin, but they're very smart women. They're very smart. They have great head on their shoulders. They're, you know, one of them is married and has two kids. One of them is, is in a marriage, but she's, she's no longer going to be in that marriage, but they're just, they're smart and they have their shit together, right? Like they're able to run a business. They have a successful business, but the, 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 the area where they need to help with is organization time management, personal finances, right? So they're just, they've been able to keep their business afloat. Like they're doing it, they're doing it, they're doing it. They're able to do that. That's where they put their energy because it's, they, their sense of pride and self-worth and self-esteem comes from being able to run their business. I know this Mm -hmm. feeling very well. The part of them that they are neglecting and not really paying much attention to is how they manage their time their relationship with their families, their relationship with their parents. Like, I mean, I have clients in their mid thirties and up, right? Cause I'm 38. So I attract basically like an early 30 up until like late forties, I would say still have unhealed issues with their parents, codependency, not being able to stand up for themselves when it comes to their parents, a lot of enmeshment, um, very, very to little boundaries at all self-talk, right? So it's like, they're able to they're able to hold one area of their life together, which is their business, because that, while it requires emotion, it's more logical, right? It's more mm-hmm. logical to be able to run your business, but the emotional side of them is being neglected. And so that's where I come in because um, I truly believe that how you do anything is how you do everything, right? So for example, one of my clients, she talked about a customer that she was having confrontation with and how she was handling it. And then just the week before, she was telling me another story that she was having with her mother. And I was like, you realize that there's a pattern here. Like how you, how you interact with your mother is exactly how you interact with your client. They're all tied together. You can't, mm-hmm. you can't just all of a sudden compartmentalize these habits of ours and these patterns of ours. So my job is to go in and really have you look at those patterns. Because when you have awareness about why you do what you do and how you show up and how to change it, you become happy. You're happier. You're happier. You feel more free. It's a little scary at first standing up for yourself and speaking up for yourself, but eventually it's like, uh, it becomes muscle memory, right? You, yeah. You, yeah. It seems like a lot of people with high achiever, um, tendencies, like they'll put their focus, maybe, it, maybe it's avoidance of, of dealing with themselves and dealing with their personal relationships. So they put themselves into, uh, maybe tasks, maybe they were re- rewarded for their efforts that they did as a younger child and it reinforces. So like, Hey, this is what I know I'm going here and I'm not going to go touch the scare. I know it's messed up and I just don't want to touch it. But, but you come to a point where, especially if you're self-aware, you go, Hey, I can't continue like this if I don't f- figure something out. And if I'm going to figure it out, I'm going to have to face it. So it does make a lot of sense of, of if you're that type of person, why, why you resonate. Cause you're like, Hey, I, I want to put the same efforts of success that I've done in other aspects of my business into the success of working on myself. I'm really happy you said that you actually just summed it up beautifully, right? It's like we as human beings, especially if you're a high achiever, we know that we can celebrate and we will get that dopamine hit when we work on the things that we know we're good at and we kind of leave the other stuff like, Oh, I'm not going 
going to touch my emotions because that's a whole Pandora's box right there. I'm not even going to go there. But let me work on what I am good at, right? I'm good mm-hmm. at my business. I'm good at, you know, putting myself out there. I'm good at marketing myself. Whatever the thing is that you're good at, you've learned that if you do that, you're going to feel good. And so we avoid working on the stuff that's uncomfortable. You know, full transparency with your audience. I just started re-seeing a therapist again. So I was in therapy for a long time. Therapists need therapists too, right? Like I'm, I'm sitting here in the business of, you know, helping other people. Trust me, I'm not going to sit here and not have someone to, that I can talk to. And I just started seeing her virtually uh, last week. And man, the stuff that came up, like a lot of, <laughs> lot of resentment that I was still holding on to. And I could tell with my, with my ex and with, even with my mom and just patterns in relationships that I noticed, which is why I choose to stay single. And I'm sharing this openly because when you start to do the work and you start to have that awareness, it no longer burdens you. It burdens you when you're not addressing it, right? It's like sweeping dirt underneath the rug and being like, okay, cool. It's not dirty anymore. Yes, it is. It's just sitting there under a rug though. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. If you, if you walk on that rug, you know, you're probably going to get a little bit of dust that's going to come up, right? It's like the same thing. So it's like, I, I think it's important, especially for me being in this line of work that I keep my mind clean. I keep my mind in check also because I'm only a human being, which is mm-hmm. why I started my podcast, being human. With <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to work on yourself. I mean, if you can't say that to yourself, how can you say that to others? So yeah. awesome. I've had a great time chatting with you. So somebody uh, wants to get connected. They want to speak with you about, you know, self-love and, and, and figuring themselves out. Where, where should they go to get in touch with you? So I have a gift for everyone listening, um, and it's specifically written for women, but I am going to say to the few good men listening, or more than few good men, uh, this is actually very applicable. If, if you as a man think you're a people pleaser as well, if you can identify with being a people pleaser and you want to learn how to give yourself the time and attention that you give everyone else, I'm going to just open this up to you guys. Don't be thrown off by the fact that the name woman is in the title, but I have a 24-page guide that I've created, Nate. It's the 10 must-have habits of ultra-confident women. I promise you the exercises that I work you through, that I walk you through in this guide, I've done this myself. I've done this with my clients. These are all the things that I've repeatedly said over and over again, so I just put it into a 24-page guide. Think of it as like a mini workshop with me. If you go to vasavikumar.com forward slash free guide, you can download it. Awesome. Awesome stuff. So I'll put all those links in the show notes. You'll be able to connect with Vasavi. And if you do reach out and say hi, tell her where you found her. And um, awesome having a great conversation with you. And I think a lot of people can find a ton of value working with you, discovering who they are, figuring out who, you know, some self-love and um, they'll make, you'll be a better person all around for it. So challenge your beliefs and see what you can do with it. (laughs) Thank you so much, Nate. I appreciate you. Thank you. Make sure to visit our website, therealnatepayo.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of All In. While you're at it, if you found value, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes or if simply tell two friends about the show. Looking to connect? You can find Nate Payo on LinkedIn or Instagram.